Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, some have expressed interest in uh, seeing how we modify an instrument from the start. So for this particular video, we got a standby gyro off of eBay. And uh, let's take a look at seeing how we'll uh, modify this guy for the simulator. Um, so the things that you want to um, have working with your simulator is your your pitch axis, which is this wheel here, your roll axis, your on-off flag, which is this one here, and we want to monitor the uh, cage switch. So once we get those meshed with the simulator, we're golden. So let's take a look at uh, each of those guys. Now for this particular instrument, um, what's involved in taking him apart, for example, was uh, he was held on by, there's a uh, one nut here, and if you take that loose, it went to uh, this screw, um, then this slides off. So once we took the cover off, we was able to take a look at it. And um, so in order to um, use this for the simulator, we're definitely gonna have to uh, simulate it. We can't stimulate it because it's all gyro driven um, it's physically in relationship the attitude with the reference frame so there are no electrical signals driving it so what we will end up doing um, we'll take a look at the pitch axis for example which is this basically this wheel here and you might can see there's a stop there and if we rotate it there it'll hit another little stop on the uh, bottom there. So this basically spins 180 degrees from here to here. So we need 180 degrees of travel. And the only thing that we need to accomplish this is this gear. We don't need this centerpiece. So in order to get this centerpiece out, we're surmising that um, we take off those four screws and then the same on the other side. And this piece will come out. And uh, I'm not sure what was going on inside. This might have been some kind of um, uh, gyro signal that these wires go through these contactors here. You might can see them. That was one wire. And then another two wires on this side. And it exit out on the... Um, you might can see this blue slip ring. And there's some wires that make contact there to take those signals out. But again, we're not using that feature for anything. So for us, um, we'll take this out and then we'll retain this wheel here. And this one seems to be held on by this screw and that screw. Holds it on to uh, this cylinder. So once we take those two out, we can pop that cylinder out. So now we want to spin this axis ourselves. So we'll probably use a, a stepper motor such as this. This is a, 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 a VID 29-05. Um, it has the wiring on the same side as your, um, your axis shaft here. Um, if we went with the VID 29-02, you can see that the wiring is on the opposite side of the, uh, the shaft. So either one of these would be fine. We'll probably go with uh, this one here. Um, so we'll mount this guy. We'll print out a like a 3D disc uh, with a hole in the center that we'll pick up. Um, that axis shaft and the disc, we can use these screws here to mount it to our 3D printed disc. And out of this disc, we're gonna have a shaft extend out. And on the other side, we'll uh, mount this guy and we'll just uh, back drill some uh, mounting holes and we'll mount him somewhere like this, but on the inside, of course and uh, it'll, the extending shaft to connect here, 
and we'll use this motor to spin this gear. So that's our intentions and that should handle the pitch force. Now the next thing we want would be the uh, roll axis. Um, so in order to pick up the roll axis, there's not really any good spots inside to mount motors really. Um, there are no gears I could interface with. Um, there is one on its inside here, but uh, not really practical to try to interface with that because if you mount something up here, um, you got interference with, uh, with the structure here. So um, trying to mount something inside doesn't seem like a good option. But if we look on this outside here, we can see this shaft and if we can get our finger on it. So as long as we can spin this shaft, we would be golden for the roll axis. So we can probably get something like a shaft coupler with set screws, for example. And um, we would remove these components like this fuse, the slip ring we no longer need, the connector. These components we would remove so we have access to that shaft there. Um, put this on, tighten our set screw, and then we would come in, make some kind of bracket to hold our uh, stepper motor, or even perhaps something like this stepper motor. We could almost uh, pick up that mounting screw there, really, because that almost lines up already with um, that axis. So we could probably um, get our drill and widen that hole towards the body here so that uh, that axis could line up perfectly. And then we would just uh, find a way to mount this second screw. And uh, so we'll have a motor out here to turn the roll axis. So that handles pitch and roll. Um, as far as the on-off flag goes, um, the on-off flag, you may can see it, it's driven by um, this shaft, which in turn is this motor here. So we look at it and uh, there's four wires, white, green, black, and yellow. And uh, we can probably look up that part number no, it's upside down now. Uh, let me see. We can probably look at that part number of uh, this guy here. I can hold him steady. Singer, Kerfot. So we can look him up and see um, what signals are needed to drive that motor because it's that motor you may can tell or can't tell there's a gear um there's a gear right there and that gear if i can grab the shaft you may can see it um but that gear is what is driving the flag um through this shaft here so once we drive that one that take care of our on off flag. Um, so that'll be the third piece. So um, we'll do that. It's kind of hard to get my fingers in here to turn them now. Um, okay, so now that just leaves one more piece and that is our cage switch. So this particular one has a, um, it actually cages the, um, the instrument here. It'll cage it or uncage it. Um, that feature we don't need. We don't need to put all the way out. Only thing that we need to do is a slight um, pull out of the switch. And if we listen, you can actually hear 
the uh, the limit switch, which is this green guy here. And you, if I can, I might could, if I can balance this with one hand. See if I can focus. Okay, so this is our limit switch. And when you pull this slightly, it pulls down this lever and hits that button. And the slightest tug, you can hear it actuate. So we'll use that limit switch for our cage feature. So the slightest tug on the cage, it'll operate and we don't need to fully um, cage it. Um, we might use that feature anyway. Um, shouldn't affect the motors really. And all that does is just locks the instrument and uh, in the, um, you know, the normal position there. I can just let them go. But anyway, if you pull it, it just straightens the instrument out. So even if I had the stepper motors hooked up, we could still use that cage feature to um, orient the, uh, the motor. Um, but actually, no, because once the stepper motors are hooked up, you don't want to shift the axis, otherwise, the motor would lose track of the position of the instrument. So um, in that case, all we do want is that limit switch and don't move the instrument now that I'm thinking about it. So at any rate, that's the thought process of um, modifying your instrument. You look at what the simulator is looking for and you see how to um, get all of your signals into the simulator. And that'll just be two stepper motors, one for pitch, one for roll. Um, we'll have to maybe come up with a driver circuit, circuit for this motor, but he'll do the flag. Um, otherwise, we would have to replace this motor with uh, something else in order to turn that shaft. Um, so we'll see which one is easier and uh, the limit switch for the cage and that'll get you a uh, standby ADI um, for your simulator. Well, just want to share that and uh, thanks again for watching and um, good luck with your cockpits.